Today's video is brought to you by Kyberlite. More about them after the trailer. A test is in order. Five enhanced clones, more capable than an army. Yet they exhibit a concerning level of disobedience in disregard for orders. What else you got? Give me more! Our squad's nothing but trouble. But we get the job done. You'll climb Force 99. You know who we are. Hunter. Let's go. Echo. Hyperdrive's online. Tick. Prepping to jump. Wrecker. Let's blow something up. Yeah! And Crosshair. Your move. We're all you need. I want Clone Force 99 found and wiped out. The galaxy's a dangerous place to be. We need to get out of here. What do you say, kid? You want to come with us? How can I help? The Clone Wars have ended. You can either adapt and survive, or die with the past. Decision is yours. We do what we do. <laughs> Strap in, kid. Now I want to take a minute to break down this trailer and talk about some of the stuff we saw as well as some predictions for the first season of The Bad Batch. But before we get into that, today's video is sponsored by Kyberlite, my absolute favorite sponsor. Why are they my favorite? Well, because it's a lightsaber company, obviously. Not only that, they are actually my favorite lightsaber company with great customer service and a product line that invites endless customization. Right now I'm rocking this combination, which I call the Revenite because it is the only saber I've been able to find or make that even remotely resembles the Revenite lightsaber from SWOTOR. As always, I've got a link to their website below as well as my promo code LORESTAR5. All right, so back to the trailer. What I'm gonna do is I'm just going to play parts of the trailer and then I'm going to be pausing it on certain screens and kind of talking about some of the stuff that I'm noticing. So here we go again. A test is in order. Five enhanced clones, more capable than an army. All right, so right off the bat, I want to draw your attention to these here. I had speculated in a previous video that these are either uh, phase zero Dark Troopers, the earliest iteration of the Dark Troopers we see in The Mandalorian Season 2. Uh, we know that the predecessor for those Dark Troopers were actually suits with old aging clones inside of them. These horrible, terrible experiments and mutations done to fuse their bodies with machines and rip out everything that wasn't necessary. Um, however, the other option was that these were simply the same type of droid that was used in season three of uh, Star Wars Rebels and season four, I believe, where we see Grand Admiral Thrawn fighting against them and training against them. And given the fact that they are here in the training room, I'm guessing it's actually a form of training droid and not phase zero dark troopers, which is a bit disappointing. But an interesting thing here is we're starting to see that Tarkin doesn't trust the Bad Batch, which is going to imply that this season will have the Bad Batch fighting against the Republic or the fledging Empire. Yet they exhibit a concerning level of disobedience in disregard for orders. What else you got? Give me more! Alright, so I know this is not a big deal at all, but I just love V-Wings. I think they are so cool, and it's tragic that they're only in the films for all of, like, 14 seconds combined, but I love that they came out like during that transformation from the Republic to the Empire. They're a really cool and unique ship that kind of, they had that TIE fighter sound and stuff. And I don't know, I just like them. And I think that this is cool because it is showing that it's like 
the remnants of the Republic and the early days of the Empire. And I think that that is just such a great and cool era. So that is something that really excites me about the show. Okay, sorry. We'll wait for something more important. Our squad's nothing but trouble. But we get the job done. All right, so the official subtitles for the video on the actual Star Wars YouTube channel credits this kid as Omega. Uh, I don't know who he is or what he is, but later we see him wearing a Kaminoan clone outfit. And so it does maybe imply that maybe there is a new batch of clones that are not using the genetic makeup of Jango Fett. I really don't know, but it's kind of cool. Climb Force 99. You know who we are. Hunter. Let's go. Echo. Hyperdrive's online. Tick. Prepping to jump. Wrecker. Let's blow something up. Yeah! And Crosshair. Your move. You need. Yeah, so these are all we need. A lot of people have already started pointing out that Crosshair is not with the rest of the Bat Batch for most of this trailer. Some people even worrying that maybe he dies early on, but I don't think that's the case. While it's true that most of the trailer features Hunter, Wrecker, Tech, and Echo with Crosshair not being with them, and sometimes Omega being there while Crosshair is not, uh... I don't think that Crosshair died. The Mandalorian fan channel pointed out to me that there is a shot in the previous Bad Batch trailer that shows an elite squad trooper among the other elite squad troopers who wears armor very similar to a darker version of Crosshair's armor. Notice the backpack as well as the shape of his helmet. Both are very similar to what we see being signature to Crosshair's style. Based on the fact that the shots that we do see of Crosshair are all in that Camino area, I would imagine that during that period, after they are tested by Tarkin, that it's incredibly likely that Crosshair joins with Tarkin and abandons the rest of the Bad Batch and leads an elite squad of troopers himself. Well, I'm not sure on that 100%. I think that the fact that he is not present with the Bad Batch for most of this trailer and that the last trailer had a trooper that looked a lot like a darker version of Crosshair leads me to believe that Crosshair did indeed join the Empire. I want Clone Force 99 found and wiped out. The galaxy's a dangerous place to be. All right, so this is cool. Not really a big deal because we knew that Fennec Shand would be in this season, but again, it is cool to get this background on Fennec Shand and with her potentially playing a large role in the Book of Boba Fett, hopefully we're going to get some background in this that is going to inform the Book of Boba Fett, which is coming out at the end of this year. We need to get out of here. All right, so again, we have another shot where Crosshair is mysteriously absent. What do you say, kid? You want to come with us? How can I help? I love this line because this is exactly what 99 said during the first Battle of Camino. Fun little Easter egg here. The Clone Ah, it's Captain Rex! And that is super exciting. And so they're about to look over at a Venator. Um, but here's actually the, probably the biggest counter to the crosshair is a bad guy theory because there's crosshair right there and between crosshair and rex you can see omega which would take place after the scene where they escape with omega from camino so either crosshair is redeemed or that theory is totally debunked or somehow the crosshair turning a bad guy thing comes way later but i actually have a hard time believing this this shot really does make me rethink all of that but it is so cool that they team up with captain rex which again does lend itself to that idea of these clones who defied the Empire kind of sticking together during the early Imperial era, which is just super cool. Have ended. All right, so this bow kind of reminds me of the bows used by the Knight Brothers on Dathomir, especially in Jedi Fallen Order, and I think the Knight Sisters used them in the Clone Wars as well. Um, but I'm not really sure if it is the same or if it's just that same style or maybe that's just what bows look like in the star wars universe i don't know but uh, we see the kid using it on a clone trooper so this is clearly him with the bad batch fighting against the clone troopers of the empire you can either adapt and survive 
So I am nearly certain that this planet is Onderon. Onderon is a very specific and unique architecture for Star Wars. And I'm pretty sure that that's where this is taking place. And I think that that's supported by the fact that we know that Saw Gerrera is going to be in the Bad Batch. And Saw Gerrera is from Onderon. But during the early days of the Empire, he would leave Onderon to begin a campaign to crusade against the Empire. And so this will obviously be showing that. And I think it's very likely that it will start with the Bad Batch actually meeting him on his home world of Onderon, which will also give them the opportunity to actually show the Imperial occupation of Onderon and what inspired Saw Gerrera to fight as he did against the Separatists. Or die with the past. The decision is yours. All right, so just a couple little things here. Uh, first, we see that Fennec Shand is actually hunting down the Bad Batch, and so they start off the season at odds, at least. Um, I really do kind of hope that they keep Fennec Shand as an antagonist for the Bad Batch, because it is implied pretty heavily that she is not to be messed with when we first hear about her in The Mandalorian Season 1. Um, and I think that it would be crucial for them to keep Fennec Shand as this elite mercenary for all the top crime syndicates in Star Wars, including the Huts, as Mando says. We do what we do. All right, so I searched far and wide for these droids and have no idea what they are. They do have a lot in common with the style of droids we tend to associate with bodyguarding, so I'm assuming that that may be their purpose. I thought that even they may have been a variation of the HK-87 droids we saw in the Mando Season 2, but... I think that that was just because they kind of look like earlier HKs, like HK-47, HK-50, HK-51, so on. Uh, they don't really actually look anything like HK-87s from Mando Season 2. So if your guess is as good as mine. If I'm missing something, please let me know in the comments. What are these droids? I don't know. Again, my guess is bodyguard droids. And now we get to the arc that I am the most excited about, the return to Zygeria. That arc was never resolved. While we do see that, you know, Obi-Wan, Ahsoka, and Anakin escaped the Zygerian slavers, the Zygerian Empire hasn't been fully destroyed yet because the Jedi were like, oh, we've got more important things to worry about than, you know, slavery. You know, we've got a, we've got a war against some robots, so we'll do that instead. But uh, I'm really excited to see this. I don't know if this is going to be sanctioned by the late Republic or early Empire as a, hey, no, we do need to take out these guys because they are an atrocity against morality. And that's, you know, kind of our responsibility to take care of. Or if this is when they're lone wolfing it and trying to make the galaxy a better place without the oversight of the Republic or the Galactic Empire. So we're going to have to wait and see on that. But this is probably the arc I am most excited for. Strap in, kid. And that is pretty much it. I actually am now really excited for Bad Batch. I mean, I was excited before, um, but I didn't love their arc in Season 7 of The Clone Wars. I enjoyed it thoroughly, but I think for me, the highlight of the season was the Siege of Mandalore. And so when I go back, those are usually the episodes I want to rewatch. But it's looking like this is going to be a really good and deep show, kind of about that time in the late days of the Republic, the early days of the Empire. And I think that that is kind of one of my favorite eras is the first five years of the Galactic Empire. You know, the Empire isn't fully the Empire we see in the films. They're still using a lot of Republic tech, like they're still using the V-Wings, they're still using the Republic police gunships, and it's just, it, there's there's just a re lot of really cool stuff to explore in that area, and I love it, and I'm so excited. So, um, as much as, like, you know, the Bad Batch, the characters themselves, are going to need to continue to grow on me, I wasn't particularly attached to them when we watched them in Season 7. The era is one that I really love, and exploring that era and seeing things like Rex and Saw Gerrera and Onderon and the Zygerian Empire and Tarkin, and I'm just I'm just so excited. So thank you guys so much for watching. Let me know what you think about this trailer, and if you are as excited as I am for Bad Batch, um, don't forget to leave your thoughts in the comments below, because as always, I want to know what you, my friends, have to say about our favorite galaxy far, far away. Feel free to like and subscribe if you enjoyed the video, or if you learned absolutely nothing new, you can leave a thumbs down completely completely guilt-free because that tells me I'm not doing my job. Thank you all so much for watching, and as always, may the Lord be with you, now and forever.